Sugarfoot. Sugarfoot was my first dog ever. We were living in Lewiston, Montana. It was winter. The average temperature, as I, far as I remember, was around 40 below. We actually did walk to school. You could see the school from where we lived in a trailer park. But it was about a mile and a half away. And we walked across this field to get to school. And it was really cold, and it's just like in the pictures of these guys in the Arctic. By the time you got to school, you had you had icicles, little isolates hanging on your eyelids. It was just an incredible cold. That's where my mom's car froze to the ground, and they had to have a tow truck pull it off the ground because if you put the car in gear, it wouldn't go anywhere. Just frozen solid. Anyway, I joined the Boy Scout troop for something to do there. And I think I was just turned 11 or 12, whatever age you got to be to be a Boy Scout. And I was assigned a, a boy to help me with the, my assignments. And the first thing I was supposed to do was go on this little day hike. And this boy, who is older than I am by a little bit, and been in Scouts a little longer, we planned a day hike and we left the trailer court and we went out and we walked up the railroad lines. There were some railroad lines that came into Lewiston. And as we were walking out these railroad lines, we came across this chained in section where there was a loading dock. And inside that chained in section was a dog. And the dog looked like he was freezing to death. And he was a small dog. Uh, bigger than a dachshund. He had long hair. More, I guess, I'd say like a Sheltie than anything else, a miniature collie. Anyway, this other boy said he really wanted that dog. And I said, well, I'd really like to have that dog. But this boy ch climbed that chain link fence and went over the barbed wire at the top, went down to the inside and picked up the dog, brought him over, climbed over and handed the dog to me. And so then he came down, so we took the dog with us on the rest of our little hike, ate our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, or whatever we had, and then went back home. Well, later on that evening, the boy came over to the house with the dog and says, my parents won't let me have it. And I asked my mom if I could have the dog, and she said, yeah. So I got to have Sugarfoot. <clears throat> and Sugarfoot was an incredible dog because And I can't even remember now if it was a he or she. Anyway, the dog was completely trained. There was very little commands that you could think of that this dog didn't know how to do. Uh, this dog could dance, this dog would roll over, this dog would lay down and you know, sit, bark on command, do everything, and was extremely well-mannered. And so that's how I got my first dog. And I had Sugarfoot until we were transferred from Montana and we took a trip to Florida, as I recall. And uh, Wayne asked if he could walk Sugarfoot and I said, yeah. And we were along the side of a freeway in Georgia and Sugarfoot apparently got away from Wayne and got hit by a car. And so I was very upset. Of course, I thought it was Wayne's fault. Wayne was just a little kid. I wasn't that old and he was younger. So anyway, that was my first dog, Sugarfoot. We got another dog later on and we named her Littlefoot, I think, or something like that. And she was a good little dog too. So what kind of dog was Sugarfoot? I don't know, another small dog about the same size as the Sheltie, only she had sh short hair, if I remember all. We had her trained, I had her trained to chase the cat. And I'd go, Row, get the cat, get the cat, and that dog would hunt that whole house for that cat. And it got where the cat knew what was going on. So when I'd say, get the cat, the cat would take off before the dog even moved. Because the cat knew what that meant. So we had a lot of, had a lot of fun that way. 
I don't know what happened to that dog. I can't remember whether they gave him her way or what when we moved from Florida back north. I don't remember. 